Hello. Thank you for taking the time to uh, listen in on our presentation of testing high-speed avionics, ethernet, and fiber channel switches. As avionics applications have increased in complexity and sophistication, they have required an ever-increasing amount of data bandwidth. And as a result, traditional bus technologies like MIL standard 1553, ARINC 429, and ARINC 629 are giving way to switched networks based on more commonly available technologies like Ethernet and Fiber Channel. With Ethernet and Fiber Channel types of networks used in avionics applications, these systems have evolved from shared buses and serial links, which are common with 1553 and ARINC 429, and they've evolved to switch networks where switches or hubs are at the core of the network and are the mass interconnect connecting all of the end nodes of the system. If we take a look at a comparison between some of the most common legacy data bus technologies as compared to the newer network-based approaches of Ethernet and Fiber Channel, we can see that not only has there been a shift from the use of serial interfaces or shared buses to, to switched star type networks, but that also Fiber Channel and Ethernet have introduced many more options and possibilities into these networks. For example, with Ethernet and ARINC 664, both optical and electrical interfaces are possible. This is also the same with Fiber Channel. And with both Ethernet and Fiber Channel, there are several options for the data bit bandwidth or the data bit rate used on the interconnects between the end nodes and the switches. For example, with Ethernet, from 10 megabit all the way up to 10 gigabit per second is currently possible. And with Fiber Channel in common avionics applications, anywhere from 1 gigabit to 4 gigabit can be found. Because network technologies such as Ethernet and Fiber Channel are based on a switch at the core of the network, they provide for simplified wiring and network connections within an aircraft system. End nodes are simply wired to the mass interconnect or the switch and are then able to communicate with any other node wired to that switch in the network. Switch networks also allow for more efficient use of the technology bandwidth when compared to a shared bus like 1553. With shared buses, only one node can communicate at any given time, and therefore the total bandwidth provided by the network is set and only allowed to be used by one node at a time. With a switch network, individual data paths can be established through the switch between end nodes, and therefore multiple pairs of end nodes can communicate simultaneously with each other and take full advantage of the bandwidth that's allowed on each link between the switch and the end node. ARINC 664, also known as AFDX, and time-triggered Ethernet are the most common implementations or adaptations of Ethernet for use in avionics networks. Both of these adaptations of Ethernet for avionics allow and use a mix of both optical and electrical media for interconnect between nodes in the network. Most commonly, electric media are used, or copper media, for the connections between individual LRUs and a switch. Then, more commonly, the optical interconnect is used amongst the switches that form the backbone of the network. Additionally, these implementations of avionics Ethernet also allow for the use of 10, 100, and 1 gigabit per second Ethernet. So in a, in a given network, all three of these link speeds could be found. Another node type that's found in Ethernet-based avionics systems are gateways. These gateways are used as a way to give legacy equipment, which only supports legacy protocols such as ARINC 429 or maybe CAN bus, a path to communicate via the switched Ethernet network to other LRUs. Also, another option that is commonly used in ARINC 664 and AFDX and time-triggered Ethernet networks is the use of redundancy. So an individual LRU would connect to two identical networks and transmit and receive all Ethernet frames simultaneously in redundancy. This allows for one whole network to go down and for the overall system to continue to operate. A core concept of ARINC 664 and time-triggered Ethernet systems used in avionics is the concept of a virtual link. Virtual links define dedicated data paths through the network from a single source to one or more destinations. The other key concept of virtual links is the idea of traffic shaping. A virtual link defines an allocated bandwidth that a transmitting node is allowed to use on that dedicated data path. The idea is that by defining this allocated bandwidth and having switches that police this, no individual node can overuse the network and therefore block the communications or restrict the communications of other nodes on the network. So the virtual links provide a level of security and integrity to the network. With AFDX systems, 
the the bandwidth allocation for an individual VL is simply a speed limit. Any node on the network can communicate at any time at once, but it can only communicate and only use a certain amount of bandwidth on that virtual link. With time-triggered Ethernet, systems are not only restricted in the amount of data they can send or the bandwidth they can use on a virtual link, but they are also restricted to specific moments in time when they can transmit on that link. What time-triggered Ethernet ensures is that no message or frame sent on an Ethernet network will encounter any contention for link or resources as it traverses through the path. So it provides guaranteed, highly accurate amounts of latency between a transmitting node and a receiving node. When designing and developing test systems to be used for the verification of Air Inc. 664 and time-triggered Ethernet avionics switches, there are several items unique to these adaptations of Ethernet which must be considered. As discussed previously, Air Inc. 664 and time-triggered Ethernet are based on the core concept of a virtual link, and VLs are identified by a 16-bit field in the Ethernet MAC address. Therefore, to be able to transmit and receive Air Inc. 664 and time-triggered Ethernet frames, the test system must have full control to set Ethernet MAC destinations for transmitted data and to accept frames with multiple different MAC destination addresses. For Air Inc. 664, the VLs can be configured to transmit frames at rates from about 8 Hz up to 2000 Hz. Therefore, a test system simulating an Air Inc. 664 end node communications with a switch must be able to be configured to generate Ethernet traffic within this range of rates for a large number of VLs on a single Ethernet network interface in order to be able to verify the Air Inc. 664 traffic policing feature of a switch. In time-triggered Ethernet networks where the transmitting nodes are only allowed to transmit at specific times, the switches have the dual role of the centralized network master clock source and time-triggered Ethernet defines a time distribution protocol used to provide the master clock to the end nodes of the network. Any test system used for the verification of time-triggered Ethernet switches must be able to speak this time distribution protocol with the switch under test. Finally, AFDX and time-triggered Ethernet switches are typically 16 to 24 port Ethernet switches. The switch test equipment must be able to support the operations of up to 24 Ethernet ports simultaneously and have the capacity to provide high-speed data on all of these Ethernet interfaces at the same time to support switch capacity testing. Also, verification and characterization of the latency through the avionics Ethernet switch must be supported by the test system. To verify this, the test system must be capable of inserting highly accurate transmit timestamps into transmitted Ethernet frames and to also accurately timestamp all received Ethernet traffic. The timestamp clocks must be synchronized across all of the Ethernet interfaces of the test system. A logical choice for a test system platform for avionic switches is PXI Express. First, PXI Express systems which can host up to 15 Ethernet test instruments are readily available. This allows for the construction of single chassis systems which can easily support all of the I.O. interfaces required to test a 24-port avionics switch when using Ethernet test instruments with at least two network interfaces per instrument. Additionally, PXI Express provides the timing and synchronization facilities required for the synchronization of the timestamping clocks of the Ethernet test instruments. There are also readily available avionics-specific Ethernet and fiber channel test instruments. Because the Ethernet switches can and typically do provide both copper and optical Ethernet interfaces, it's important to select a test instrument which provides SFP-based Ethernet interfaces which allow for the switching between physical media by only swapping SFP media transceivers. Another key feature to consider for the Ethernet test instruments is the ability to generate frame data on board as opposed to requiring host software to stream data over the system backplane to the instrument. For capacity tests, high rates of data must be generated on all network interfaces and this would swamp the test system backplane and host processor. So the test system must be intelligent enough to generate data patterns on board the test instruments. 